Welcome to Dallas Social Cafe. I'm Deandra Simmons. I'm excited to share today's show with you. I had an extraordinary opportunity to sit down with a number of the world's best trumpet players in the green room at the Meyerson. We were there for the Cancer Blows event. Later, I'll take you to One Arts Plaza to meet a very close friend of mine who is displaying 21 years worth of his inspiring photography. You won't want to miss this seven-time medal-winning veteran. So grab a fresh cup of coffee and jump in your favorite chair or sofa. I'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to Dallas Social Cafe. First stop is the Meyerson in the Arts District of downtown Dallas. I get to meet backstage a few legendary trumpet players, including a friend of mine who created this wonderful event, Cancer Blows. Today we're joined by Lee Lochnane from the legendary band Chicago, Grammy Award winning band Chicago. Lee, thank you for being here. I'm so excited. I am a child me. of the 70s and 80s. I grew up with your music. I love your music. And so it's such mm -hmm. an honor to have you here today on Dallas Social Cafe. Thank you. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about your relationship with Ryan Anthony and why you decided to come and participate in Cancer Blows. Well, I met Ryan many, many years ago. I, I, I don't even know how many years ago it was before he was with the Canadian Brass. And uh, he showed up backstage one night and I noticed that it w there was somebody standing on the other side of the room and they had, he had something obviously that he wanted to have signed. So I went over and started talking to him. Uh, since then he has told me that his wife had said, please don't come backstage. <laughs> his wife had something to do with that show and uh, she didn't want to be embarrassed by, you know. By him asking for an autograph? Or <laughs> exactly. And uh, we have no problem signing autographs. So I went over and I met Ryan that night and ever since then his whole career with the Canadian Brass and, and then with the, the subsequently with the Dallas Symphony, he's been able to come to shows every once in a while. And mm -hmm. uh, he called about a year, just after he was diagnosed with uh, multiple melanoma. Mm -hmm. I think that's how you pronounce multiple it. Multiple myeloma, but myeloma. that's okay. Thank you. But anyway, he knows cancer a little more in depth now. Mm -hmm. And, and um, he was able to put together a foundation and decided to really stand up and fight this thing. And uh, we're just here to help him out. And it's great to be able to give something back because I've gotten, as you know, a lots of accolades and, and money through mm -hmm. the years. So it's, it's really gratifying to be able to give something back. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk to you a little bit about was uh, Doc Severinsen, you know, is part of Cancer Blows as mm -hmm. well. And I know that he had some influence on the band Chicago after the death of Terry Katz. So yes. tell well, me a little bit about that. Also, and before the death of oh, Terry okay. Yeah, we played a place called The Factory mm -hmm. in 1968. And The Factory was a, a dinner hangout for the A-list uh, actors and actresses in Hollywood. And the first set was a dinner set. So we played, they wanted us to play Misty and Moonlight in Vermont, and, mm -hmm. you know, the, the various stuff that we used to play in clubs. And uh, for some reason, one, I guess I should not name him, but one of the A-list actors decided that we were too loud and had us fired the night that oh Doc was there, <laughs> Diana Ross, Bill Cosby, uh. and they all stood up and championed us. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> funny. I love it. But anyway, we got fired that night. and. Um, uh, the next time we saw Doc, we various uh, times we would go to the Tonight Show and say hi, but when Terry Kath died in '78, mm -hmm. uh, Doc came to the funeral. I know that was a big turning point for your band. Oh yeah, and he was instrumental, from what I've heard, in keeping you guys He's, together. He wanted us to keep going. He mm -hmm. said, "You know, Terry's going to want you to keep doing this." Keep so, doing it, yeah. yes. And you have. Soldiering on, yeah. And, we have. and you have. Definitely. Now we can't get out. <laughs> Still going at it. I love that. What do you hope personally after tonight, after Cancer Blows, what do you hope um, becomes of this event and what kind of legacy do you think this event will leave for not only the city of Dallas but for Ryan Anthony? Well, I think so far already it's become something of a phenomenon mm -hmm. that uh, so many people know about it already and that was mm -hmm. the whole point of this is to get the word out of what the disease is, not that people don't know what cancer is, mm -hmm. but this was one of the the particular cancers that had no cure. Right. And uh, Ryan is testament to mm -hmm. being able to stand up to it and, and conquer it. So if anybody can do it, he can do it. He can do it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Lee. I've thank enjoyed you. speaking with you, and right. I look forward to the concert tonight. Thank you very much. Me too. 
Today we're joined by legendary, I say legendary, principal <laughs> trumpet for the Dallas Symphony and my friend Ryan Anthony and Ryan is the impetus behind Cancer Blows. Ryan, yeah. welcome. I'm so glad you're here with me and I can't wait to discuss what's been going on. Thank you. This, uh, I think of all the interviews, this is definitely the one I've been looking the most forward to. Not only because it's with you and you've been so involved in Thank making you. this work. I mean, this is, um, I could have thought it, but I couldn't have made this happen without, without you. But well, also we're doing this while it's, and we're doing oh, this interview, it's, it's happening it's Okay, right so now. we're in day three. That's what I was yeah. saying. We're in day three of Cancer Blows. We've had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, full of events. Right. So how are you feeling? How's it going? What's the atmosphere you know, like out on the stage? The atmosphere, it's everything I dreamed and more. I mean, it's been an incredibly emotional the last mm -hmm. few days. I mean, the, the months that we have talked about this, the dreaming about it when I was sick mm -hmm. to, you know, just seeing really, could this happen? And when we decided it would and all the work, it is beyond the last few days my expectation of how excited the musicians and the artists are and ultimately i really wanted that i was so excited that they would want to be a part of it mm -hmm. but what are they going to walk away with are they going to be touched are they going to be moved are they going to be as excited as i am well i have had the chance to speak with some of the performers uh, mm -hmm. this evening i speak i spoke with lee Luckney oh, from yeah. chicago and he actually broke down oh. and talking about um, you know some of his experience with, Chica with Chicago mm -hmm. and also about tonight and I know he's so honored to be here for you yeah. and he thinks so much of you so um, I know that that has to mean a lot that these musicians <laughs> I mean Doc Severinsen, Lee Lochnane, Arturo Sandoval yeah. plus 22 other of the most important trumpet players in yeah. the country have come together it to honor you and I'd like to really kind of hit on your story a little bit because um, this event is for the Baylor Salmon's Cancer Center yes. and the Multiple Myeloma Research Foundation. Yeah. But you are, you at 43 were diagnosed mm -hmm. with multiple myeloma. So talk a little bit about that and how this came to be. Well, I mean, it was uh, actually it was the trumpet that brought me to the doctor. Experiencing the first symptoms of the cancer was from trying to play this as a physical instrument. and. But you just, you never think that's what the, mm. it's going to come from, just going to a doctor saying, I've got some aches and pains. Um, we knew of the cancer. We have heard about it before with others. And so when we were first told, it wasn't, let's look it up. I mean, we knew immediately it's a terminal disease. Mm -hmm. And that was um, a, a surreal moment to sit there on the bed, get the phone call from the doctor and... Nikki, could, my wife, can hear it over the phone. So before I can even say anything, she knew what I was about to tell her. And um, I still haven't figured out the right words to express what that's like to hear. I know you're in remission now. Yeah. How were you able to continue on playing the trumpet, getting your chemo, I mean, not missing any performances mm -hmm. during this whole last few years? I think a lot of it is mental. I just I can't allow the cancer to win. Mm -hmm. And that's how I look at it. If I allow it to adjust my life schedule and my lifestyle, then it, it's winning. It, it's beating me, and I just can't. It's just not an option. Well, tonight is here. Yeah. Um, we have a few hours until you go on, and yeah. Cancer Blows is an actual reality that we've all been talking about and dreaming about. So tell me about what your hopes are for the future after Cancer Blows, after the night is over, the concert has happened. I know everybody's going to walk away here just being, their minds are going to be blown by what's yeah. happening because I've seen some of the rehearsals. So tell me what you hope to achieve tonight. Yeah, the whole, it started as I wanted awareness. I want people to realize um, what's going on. And there's some amazing things happening in the scientific side of treating, mm -hmm. not just multiple myeloma, but all cancers. And at the same time, while we can be so excited about it, we can't just relax. We, mm -hmm. This is the time to really you know, make the difference. Let's keep forging ahead and, and finish this. We, we've started it. And, and so I wanted that awareness and people to, to realize I also wanted to give back, obviously, and, and thanks, but I want, when the concert is over, I don't want it just to finish when the last note stops ringing in this hall. I wanted a product that everybody's gonna leave here and feel changed, and I know the artists are, and they're gonna go back now, and then when they perform, they're gonna, part of Cancer Blows, part of this concert is now with them for the rest of their career. And already in these three days, I've had students that came up and said that their lives have been changed, l listening to these rehearsals, seeing these artists, and if it's only one or two people, then that's great. There's, I just found out there's two artists tonight. Uh, one of them, his brother was just diagnosed last month with multiple myeloma. Mm. And so this, this has completely changed his whole, he already was coming here to play. And now he has a whole different reason. He even said that's changed their, his whole family, knowing that this has been going on. And there's a, a gentleman, a student who's playing tonight. I just found out last night, he was diagnosed with uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. 
this past mm -hmm. year and he's playing and he's invited his friends and I just told him I said if nothing else if I could just change those lives yes that that's worth it okay so last question it might it might be a little bit unfair but we've been saying this is a once in a lifetime event yeah. so do we have any maybe predictions <laughs> about the future of cancer blows it, um, if I had to say right now based on it everyone that I have worked with here and all the artists they have asked they would like to do this again um, there's several different cities that uh, said they'd like to host it, but as far as I'm concerned, this is still where I live. This is where mm -hmm. I'm being treated. Um, and I, I love to show off what we have here in, in Dallas. Uh, yes, um, give us a few days to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to digest to, all this. To, to, to come down <laughs> from everything going on. <laughs> but I think there is a definite, and that was always in the back of my head, in hopes that this isn't just a one-time thing, that this, this can live on. I want this to be its own living now identity of, of what it can it can do and and these artists can take it it can go place to place the whole idea of it are just people coming together for mm -hmm. a cause using our musical instruments and our contacts so i'd like to think so i mean we're definitely going to have product with the dvd and cd and we're hopefully going to be talking to some television stations that so it will live on uh, it's just it's too amazing of a thing and um it is once in a lifetime but I'm hoping, just like right now, there's going to be a lot more in life for us to do and take advantage of it. Well, Ryan Anthony, thank you so much for taking your time to talk to me today on Dallas Social Cafe. It's been a true pleasure, thank and I wish you. you all the best tonight at Cancer Thanks. Blows. I'll be sitting there in probably one of the first two rows. I'll be looking at you for your <laughs> smile. Thank you. All right, thanks. Well, here we are at the end of our evening, and Cancer Blows has been an overwhelming success for Ryan Anthony, the Baylor Salmons Cancer Center, and for the Multiple Myeloma Research Foundation. I hope you've enjoyed some of the interviews we had with the many artists that came in from all over the world to be with us in celebration this evening. Any day that we can raise awareness and money for cancer research is a great day to be alive. What a talented group of gentlemen coming together from around the world for this event and cause in Dallas. Don't get up. I'll be right back to introduce you to someone very special. Thanks for staying with us. I'm very proud to introduce you to my next guest, a photojournalist that I've gotten to know very well. His special exhibit at One Arts Plaza is called 21. I'll let him tell you why and what it means to him. So today I'm at the lovely One Arts Plaza. We've got great weather, um, and I'm looking forward to going in and seeing a very special exhibit by artist Jeremy T. Locke. When we get in, we're gonna see some amazing photographs from a very famous war photographer. And I know a little bit more about him than most people, but we'll learn that in just a minute. So join me today on Dallas Social Cafe as we cover one of the most important photojournalists on the Dallas social scene today. Well, tonight we're at One Arts Plaza for an artist's reception honoring my husband, Jeremy T. Locke. Well, honey, I'm so glad you're here. I get to do a show with you. How lucky am I to do this? <laughs> Well, let me start a little bit by bragging on you because my husband will never brag on himself. In fact, when we're at parties, I always have to say, well, my husband is the seven-time military photographer of the year. You're also a recipient of a Bronze Star. Yes, I am. You've been published in the New York Times, Time Magazine, LA Times, Washington Post, Washington Times, and you've also received many awards, uh, such as the World Press Photo Award. You're pretty good at bragging on me. <laughs> I love it. I love bragging on my husband. Um, my husband, has an exhibit here at One Arts Plaza, and he's a 21-year veteran of the Air Force. He, he uh, retired after 21 and a half years. So let's talk about what this exhibit is. It's entitled 21, but tell me what 21 is to you. Well, 21 is 21 of my favorite photographs from 21 years of service. Um, it's just a huge honor to be able to showcase the work that I put in with the military for all these years, but then to share it with the public and, and the Dallas community. And I know because I'm married to you how proud of you are of your service and how proud you are to have worked with these men and women that give their lives for our country every day. The greatest honor is to actually sit there and document what these brave men and women do on the battlefield to, to guarantee our freedom. Well, let's take a little walk and talk about some of your work. I would absolutely love to. So Jeremy, tell me a little, little bit about what we're gonna see tonight at your artist reception, what's here in the exhibit entitled 21. Well, as I said before, 21 is 21 of my favorite photographs. Mm -hmm. And it encompasses every, 
all the exercises to the 21 years that I've, I've been in the military. So what you're going to see tonight is you're going to see uh, two tours to Afghanistan, two to Iraq. You're going to see some Africa stuff. I was one of the first ones into um, the Haiti earthquake as well as the Japan tsunami. So you're going to see a, uh, a neat range of all that. Just kind a of whole stuff. milieu of everything, Absolutely. of 21 years of experience of you traveling the globe, and I know to over 50 countries, which we have a little argument about who's been to more countries. I have been. So let's walk around the corner and see what's over here. And another one of the photos that I love so much is really dear to my heart because we were actually dating at this time. We were actually. And tell me about this trip. Well, this is, uh, it was a sad trip, but also a great trip, because if you remember, that's when we were dating. Uh, we just started dating and... Well, I hated this trip because he was gone for 30 days living in a tent and could not talk to me. So that did not bode well with me. But I lived in Mongolia <laughs> for 30 days on the Mongolia-Russian border with mm -hmm. the border forces. And um, there's a saying in Mongolia that a horse is, uh, a Mongolian without a horse is like a bird without wings. The Mongolians really treasure their, uh, their horses. And this uh, picture is after a horse race, they pour mare's milk on the horse's head, the winner's head, to celebrate and show a good time. Absolutely amazing trip. 30 days of just pure fun bliss. So Jeremy, I, of course, I'm your wife, so I know about your past, but tell um, people that don't know you a little bit about your um, job in the military, what it entailed. My job in the military as a combat photojournalist was we were the eyes and ears of the Joint Chief Staff, the Pentagon, sometimes the President, but the most important thing was we were the uh, eyes and ears of the on-scene battlefield commanders. And what does that all mean is, is my job was to go out and document for historical purposes what our brave men and women were doing. And, and uh, you know, it's, war is not a pretty business, um, but one of the things I always try to do is look for the beauty in people. You know, um, for instance, this photograph, it doesn't have the beauty in it, but this is what war is, you know. And I, when, when I'm out photographing, it doesn't matter if it's war or if it's the pet of the week. I always try to bring it back in a different way that, that you wouldn't see if you were standing right next to me. Mm -hmm. That's my job as a photojournalist, is to make you feel something, to make you stop, read a caption, maybe read a story. Well, Jeremy, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to uh, take me on a tour of your exhibit, 21. And I want to talk a little bit about your future, and I also want the viewers to know where they can see your work and where they can learn more about you and what you're going to do for the future, because I know how exciting it is, because I live with you. I'm your wife. This is my first solo exhibit. We have another uh, exhibition launching in May, and that'll, that'll cover my Burning Man series. However, though, I feel that you're only as strong as your last photograph that you've taken so I'm constantly out there trying to look for new projects to start we just did an amazing wrap-up on uh, cancer blows where I photographed that was awesome yeah some of the most famous trumpet players in the world amazing um, to see some of that work and and uh, future work you can go to my website which is www.jeremytlock.com jeremytlock.com right. okay right or you can uh, find out what I'm doing uh, on a weekly kind of basis with uh, my blog. And uh, yeah, just look forward to many more neat and in-depth stories. Well, this year, I can say a little bit, we're going, you're planning on going to Cuba, and I'm yes. hopefully going to accompany you to do a story there. And then we're both going to Africa for almost a month, I and we're going to see what we can get into over there. So we have a lot of exciting things coming up. Yeah. Um, I want to tell a little bit about your Burning Man series, because that's yeah, a really artistic departure that is totally different from it's this. It's very different from, uh, from my photojournalism. The beauty of Burning Man is it was an opportunity for me to play, step outside of my normal you know, photojournalism style, but get out there and play. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to encourage everyone to go and see Jeremy's website again, www.jeremytlock.com. You can see Burning Man, you can see lots of galleries. We're always adding new photographs. He's always asking me for advice too on what That's I think right. is the wife. So I love that you do and you ask me what I think and what my opinion is. I appreciate that about you. Well, Jeremy, it's been a wonderful afternoon and I've enjoyed walking through the exhibit and learning more about you and about uh, your experiences um, through 21, which is your vision. And I'd like to thank you for taking your time to join me on Dallas Social Cafe. Could you tell how proud I am of my wonderful husband? When you meet him someday, I think you'll understand why. That's it for today's show. 
I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did making it. Please like us on Facebook and tell your friends to catch us here next time for the best of Dallas philanthropy, society, and lifestyle. Have a great day.